What, uh, September, what is today, the 19th? 19th. Okay. 2019, uh, we're at the Rudder Workshop just before Open House, and uh, Justin was here uh, a month or so ago, a month and a half ago, to visit the factory, demo flight, and see if he wanted the Super Duty or the 750 stole. And uh, he kind of made up his mind, all he needs is a 750 stole, so he came to the rudder workshop, uh, started yesterday, and he finished his rudder about noon today. Uh, we're up just flying around. He's already been given a demo flight to 750, and we're just out flying around and uh, enjoying the afternoon instead of being down there and working. Yeah. <laughs> Heck of so, a good view. So I'm going to let Justin uh, sit back, and uh, maybe he can explain a little bit his uh, over, you know, how, how the workshop went and uh, what was he expecting. and. Uh, and what what he was wanting to get out of it, and what he did, did get out of it, yeah. and if he feels confident going on and building the next, you know, tail section, wing section, I definitely well, feel Justin, confident. I'm leaving it up to you now. I definitely feel confident flying this, but I'm going to give you the controls okay. when I talk. So okay. your controls. You're like me. I can't do both. Yeah, I can't. I'll, I'll sit here and be fumbling around. Uh, so if we're, if we're talking about uh, my, my process from when I started to now. Uh, I came up, did the demo flight. Really was interested in getting the Super Duty after talking to you guys, kind of like I was saying. Uh, if you watched the previous video, you guys, you would figure you would want to sell the higher end kit, but if, for my mission, it wasn't really needed. So, start looking at the 750 uh, stall extremely hard after I left. Uh, I love, I, it's the same fuselage as the Super Duty, so it's good for a big guy like me. Uh, what I, the power plant I'm putting, planning on putting in, it's going to work perfect. Uh, everything like that, it just it, it lowered my cost enough to where I could really do this 100% and go at it full force. So I appreciate that from you guys for really, really sitting down and hearing about my mission and what I wanted to do and, and helping me pick out the right plane. Um, with that being said, uh, first thing I did, uh, you know, I put some money down when I came up last time and got the components kit so it'll be ready. Nice go for Memorial. That marks the Alpha, five miles to the left, inbound to one eight. Nice to go. It'll be ready in about four weeks, which is awesome. But that, so it's actually almost ready to pick up. Uh, in between that, you guys have this fly-in and the rudder workshop. So I decided to come up and build the rudder. Absolutely amazing experience uh, for a guy like me with with the issues of uh, mobility with my left hand. I was kind of worried. Uh, you know, am I, am I going to be the Clecos and all that? Right. And, uh, Mr. Steve showed me this pneumatic Cleco gun. Uh, so, uh, you know, that was pretty cool. Something I didn't know existed. But, uh, just coming up and getting the information before I ever even started was awesome. And so we got up here, we started building. The, the instructions are super, super clear, super easy. You know, I'm the type of guy that I'm not afraid to ask for help, but sometimes when you're in a big group like we were, you kind of watch other people and try to figure out where you're at, but it wasn't like that. Uh, the instructions were were pretty crisp and clean. Uh, I had a question on one or two things, and then come to find out it wasn't even anything I did. It was the skin wasn't the holes. The first time you guys had ever seen that, so that was kind of cool. Uh, so, But that was easy. We went ahead and drilled the holes, and, you know, I... That's how you used to do it, and everything's match drilled now, you know. So you don't you don't have to do that. But it was it was an experience. I enjoyed the heck out of it. All the people up here. I think that's probably the the thing that I've said the most. It's like a grassroots family environment, and I felt it last night. You know, we we started doing the the build. Everyone, you know, where are you from? Who are you? You know, what's the puppy dog's name? You know, that right. type of thing. And it it was awesome. And then we went to the dinner and. That was a heck of a good time. We all had a good meal and had a good fellowship there with everyone. And right, and that's and that's what it is. It's you know, it's uh, you know, it's not us. It's all our customers are the same way, and, and yeah. it just makes you feel very comfortable. They're doing the same thing that you're doing, and it's just everybody's uh, you know, same desire to to build a, a kid airplane. Yeah, that, I think that was kind of the other nice side of it was I'm, I'm the only one that came up from Arkansas, but I've got guys that are about 150 miles from me. You know, we already swapped numbers planning on going and helping and you know when they get their kids type of thing and that 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 right there is where there's a way to go too is you, you have the ability not only to to call you guys you know you'll pick up the phone you you yourself or mr steve will pick up the phone and help any anytime anything's needed and you know troubleshoot but it's also nice to be able to find other guys that are doing it kind of go and help them when they hit those rocks that maybe you hit 
you know, we can go and help them so they're not having to, to wait and all that. Oh, you know, you definitely will. You'll be yeah. calling and uh, you'll have some questions and this and that because, you know, we're not only changing parts all the time, we're changing my manuals, we're changing drawings. Yeah. You're going to want to know how to do the nav strobes or the landing lights or the fuel system or the, the engine, the avionics. And, you know, with our kits, you're putting so many different engines and avionics that, you know, it's hard to keep up with all that. And, uh, you know, we're just a phone call away. Or even we'll give you a list of builders or customers that you yeah. had contact. Yeah, that was something that happened when I... When I money down on my kit and ordered it. Uh, I got a list of all the builders in basically all of Arkansas. I fired off a few emails. I got, you know, out of, uh, I think, 20 that I sent, I got like 18 back. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, that there are 18 people like, oh my gosh, we're, we're, you know, we're not too far. You know, a, lot of, a lot of those guys are in the finished stages of building and there's a few of them that are just starting. So uh, I kind of get the spectrum. Right. And, uh, it's my cool. job Alpha, Well, I tell you what. Why don't we finish up with uh, you know we're we're going you finish with the rudder workshop, and tomorrow's uh, starting of our open house, and then uh, Saturday is our open house. So why don't we just go back and do a couple grass landings, and uh, then we can relax the rest of the day and and. Uh, see what all the other customers are going to do. Oh yeah, I appreciate it. This is, like I said, this has been, been a good experience. I've enjoyed the yeah. heck out of it. Well, I enjoy I enjoy every customer I have. You know, it's, uh, you know, all my customers are coming to me because it's something they've been wanting to do all their life. Even though you're very young, yeah. uh, most of my customers no, are ready to retire and, you know, they're, you know, 60, 65, 70 and, you know, they're at the happiest moment of their life. Yeah. And it's just fun. Yeah, you know, that, that was kind of the other thing what I was talking about was uh, since I'm on the younger side, I was worried that I wouldn't find other guys that were kind of in the same age range or anything because a, a lot of guys I've talked to that are building, I mean, like you're saying, they're in the 60s. But uh, when you're talking about being like family, it, it doesn't really matter. Right. And, uh, you know, they, they took me in last night, you know. It, it, was, it was such a good time. I had, I've had such a good time. Like, uh, I kind of want to come to the next one just to hang <laughs> out, but... You know, I have to buy another rudder for that, right? Right. Well, maybe we'll bring you back to. You can help. Uh, yeah, I'd love uh, to be a, be a spokesman or whatever. Yeah, I'd love to. We, we always encourage other builders, our existing builders, to fly in during a rudder workshop. We've had them fly yeah. in and you know help out with the workshop you want. We just it's just, it's a fun environment. Let me make a radio call. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, Mexico traffic. Spermal 750 is going to enter left face for 1H. Uh, is there any other traffic in the pattern? Oh, I see the traffic in the pattern. Got you, number two. Yeah, so Foxtrot Alpha is left base one eight. I knew there was traffic. Yeah, I was, I was watching him. I didn't know. If he's coming down fast. Yeah. And that's uh, the other guy from Final one eight. Yeah, Mexico traffic. Spermal 750 is going to uh, turn uh, final for one eight. And I do have traffic in uh, sight. No factor. Okay, we got gas under carriage. Mixed prop seat belts looks great. And well, what we're going to do today, Justin, uh, I don't think you said, you said you didn't ever land on grass, so we're going to land yeah, on grass. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd like uh, to see what this thing can do. And, you know, actually grass is a lot more forgiving than the, the asphalt, especially with the bigger tires you go with. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, the only thing is, if you land in grass out, out in the middle of a field and stuff, uh, you know, sometimes you lose your depth perception a little bit because okay. you don't have the edges of the runway and all that. Look at all these birds. Yeah, oh yeah. There are about five of them there. Right over the end of the runway. So we're a little high. That's okay. It's better to be a little high than a little low. And we're going to lower our flaps. And we might uh, slip it a little bit here. There we go. It was about 100 feet or so. Yeah. Maybe 200. Five knot crosswind. Yeah. And the 750 store, what I like to do is I like to adjust power quite a bit. Uh, bring the nose up, adjust power, bring the nose up. And, there was, and that's how I can land very short with the 750. My slats will really start working at that point. Gosh, this thing just floats, doesn't it? You can. Yep. Like a balloon. And it's a hot day. We're, you know, yeah, that's the other thing. We're over 3,000 foot density altitude. Golly. Hey there. Yeah, I, you know, I thought it would be a little... That's, yeah, that's just a floating land right there. Yeah. Well, I think we better get back to the factory, and uh, <laughs> we probably need to start cleaning up for the open house. Yeah. All right, see you, everybody.